for our in-house dungeon master, Spencer Crittenden. Look at him. Looking all good. Looking all good. Got the ponytail to the side. Looking good, man. Are you shrinking? I No, I'm growing. It's a nightmare, man. I got to die. Oh, boy. I'm fat again. It sucks. I'm still fat. Let's give it up for the mayor of Harmontown, Mr. Dan Harmon. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you discussed what you wanted at the beginning of the show, and it totally left my brain. Yeah, I'm, look, I'm giving you space. I'm sensitive <laughs> to you. Like, I, I came into the green room and was like, hey, Rob, uh, 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 I had an idea for, for tonight. He's like, whatever you want, man. <laughs> I'm like, all right. Uh, just a pitch. Like, you don't have to do it. And he's like, whatever you want, man. I was like, well, do you want to double down on like the moderator practice thing? You're going to be moderating the Comic-Con panel. Everybody know that it? I'm moderating the Rick and Morty <laughs> Q&A. Like, you, could, you, could, you could introduce it as either the Harmontown panel or the practice Rick and Morty panel, and in either case, bring people out. It's like, yeah, whatever you want. I'm like, all right, what is and going on? And then in on? turn, it came out, and I didn't give you anything you want. Yeah, I mean, bad it's friend. fine. It's also, no, it's bad fine. Bad friend. That's what friends are for. I don't care. Shitty friend. Like I said to you back there, I don't give a fuck if you like my idea or not. I don't I liked anybody. your idea. In fact, I was even thinking about that before... And then you went and off on a thing I, that had you in a bad mood, and you kind of lost I'll, yourself, and you, you went know. into autopilot out here, and that's fine. I can do that too. Here's well, my thank here's you my for autopilot. I just go to my little notes here. Oh, Bagel Boss. <laughs> Who hasn't heard enough about that guy? Let's talk about him. Did you see that video of that little I guy? I saw the video he's about so the, upset. He's, he, the here's the thing. He his name isn't Bagel Boss. Oh. I thought he what? was the Bagel Boss. He went to a place called Bagel Boss. Mm. Am I saying bagel right? I don't even know. <laughs> I wouldn't bagel. know. Was I? Bagel. 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 What did I say? Bagel. Something. Right? You did a whole season of television off of mm -hmm. that, right? Yeah, because I don't know. I have well, to I say the word bagel, and then pe people yeah. will alternatively go, you still see it like that, or they'll go like, Wait, why are you saying it right now? And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about unless I think about it. I'm not going to think about the word bagel. I'm tired of it. I'm, Whatever. Let's, let's move on. This yeah, is not I mean, even worth I was worried time. that a little bagel uh, boss who's apparently not the boss. He's not the boss. I was worried for five seconds that he was, would kill himself. I think he's like, a viral guy. I think yeah. I heard that he's like one of these, <laughs> one of these viral guys. Yeah, no, he's, <laughs> he's having a field day. No, like, like he, he's one of these people who stages things and is like, ah! Mm -hmm. and so yeah, so like he's done videos before. I think God he's like the, the nylons you know, boss or something. I'm sorry, Spencer. I'm cutting you off, but really. Please don't. Who's got... <laughs> Who's got the time, energy, or want to do anything? The little bagel guy. <laughs> yeah, but I look at that and I go, and I, I, I go, okay, I understand that on paper, but mm. the sheer like get up in the morning yeah. and and, no, I don't, and the oh. the energy that he, I mean. Geez. But if you have nothing else, I mean, if he could like weld things, I thought it was interesting because he's like a part of his meme is that he was like when he yells at the guy, he goes, "You're not God." my father, and then he kind of like pauses for a second, goes, or my boss. And I thought, why would you throw that in there? And I was like, oh, he's worried he's going to get fired. Who is, where does he work that, 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 that crediting his boss right at the end there is going to make the difference? Spencer, I'm sorry. I thought he just read the, you know, the sign on the wall, and it was like, oh, right, boss, bagel boss. Oh, right, okay. Anyways, we don't have to talk, talk about or bagel Or my boss, bagel. Little guy. 
I'm just, I'm just glad. I'm, I'm at an age now and a kind of world weariness where I was like, the worst thing about that story was I was like, oh, this guy might kill himself. Like this is too much. Like, like I because the video just has him get, cutting out. I didn't. I, I I worried about him for five seconds until it. You get the rest of the story and it turns out like he's no, a he's a pig and guy. shit. He loves it. He's like he, and and then he's like this is that was a big day for him. You're looking at one of the most important days of his life. You now, guys, yeah. You guys hear about this uh, gamer girl bathwater? <laughs> no. There's this gamer girl what's selling her bathwater. <laughs> I like that you said it like uh, Jed Clampett from <laughs> yeah. the Beverly Hillbillies. What's, I love that what's. Isn't that funny? What, what's as, uh, wait, what are we using what's as when Who we talk is? like a hillbilly? Sometimes yeah, or I guess that which, is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's. Yeah, she, she sold two baths worth of water now, I understand. How big are they? Like energy shot bottles? Or uh, are they a bit bigger, like uh, less like, than a pint of ice cream kind of size, but about there, like in a glass. Is she hot? Oh yeah. I mean, I shouldn't say that. She's probably young. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to ask it or answer. Well, I'm but... trying to. Okay, let me ask you a different question. Is he? Is she dirty? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't know. <laughs> well, if she took a bath, <laughs> is she how dirty is she? Yeah, bath water. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's 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 well, good. Terrific. They'll sell anything. They'll buy anything. I bought. I I uh, thank you for that segue. I bought a fifteen hundred dollar pool. <laughs> Not robot. my pitches. God damn it. <laughs> Not my pitches. It's a pool robot, was yeah, it? Yeah, I bought one of those pool robots. It doesn't matter. How big is it? How tall? It's like a six it's feet like tall. It's like a little dune buggy. Like, right. so I've got the most expensive one. I went to a pool Bipedal? supply store, and I think like pool supply store is like they must exist in some kind of bubble where like people are calling them all the time for like free pool advice. I think like if it was a doctor's office, they'd just be like, "What's your insurance?" and people would hang up. But a pool place, you could just call and be like, hey, how many buckets of water kill a spider? You know, I think I, th I just, uh, I got that impression because the phone was just ringing off the hook the entire time I was there, and the guy kept answering, and he'd go, uh-huh, uh-huh. Hey, I, I actually have a customer in the store right now, so can I get back to you? And I kept wanting to go, you don't have a, I don't want anything from you. I, 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 you can see a fucking net on a stick. Like, I don't need your help. Like, you can talk on the phone all you want. I'm only here because I don't want to wait a day for the mail. Um, and uh, yeah, I bought a net on a stick and a pool robot for the bees. Yeah, a lot of insect life. You have a lot of bee problems. There's a lot of bees in the pool. Bees in the pool. Did you see? I did a Austin Power as a bee T-shirt. I saw that T-shirt. I liked it. I pressed the heart button oh, for you. Thank you. <laughs> Selling. It's really burning up the charts mm -hmm. over at Shrub Home Video on my T-shirt page. Hey, okay, do you have any of these uh, yes. Polish moles, as they call them in no. Milwaukee, skin Polish. tags? Uh, you know, I haven't had descent. one in a really long time. I, I got don't... one on Ooh. my fuck it. It's disgusting. You know what you do? Just rip it off. <laughs> well, I wanted to ask you about it, but obviously you're going to give joke answers. Okay, you know what you do? Thing. You get dental floss, and you tie it up, and then it strangles it to death. And it falls off. But I, what about all the talk about, like, but the reason I have one dangling off of me is because at some point in my life, like, it entered my consciousness that you you're not cursed. supposed to fucking, oh. you're not supposed to touch them, you're not supposed to mess with them. Well, I think they do tend to grow back, but I've read that about those things. They do fall off. They do fall off on their they own. I had one off. on my collarbone once off. that grew, and I was convinced I had cancer for a week, and then it just, like, fell off yeah. one day. And then I and I but I've I've got this one on my arm. Is it that new? It Is looks it? like a little quato. No, it's very old. Like okay. I'm just letting it. I'm giving it crackers. I, there's I, this. <laughs> there's this uh, wart remover that you it it comes in like kind of like um you know like when you spray like air 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 spray like canned air and you turn it upside down and uh -huh. then it feels cold and then yeah blows you out used smoke. to run around my apartment pretending to fart. You loved that the day you found that out. If you held the can upside down, it would shoot visible like air out. It's pretty cool. And you would like, you went through a case of canned air, standing in doorways, going <laughs> like shooting like white Does smoke. Does anybody out of your have butt. any canned air? I don't think they understand. Is there canned air in the building? Can somebody go get? 
I don't think I think they can visualize it. If you okay. hold it upside well, down, anyway, it makes sense. There's like this wart remover where you what it does is like it's a little can of like the whatever it freezes it. It's not a wart. Well, but the thing is, is it'll freeze it and it'll fall off quicker. Okay, but you also can just I can cut, cut it off. Like I, I, but I, I'm yeah, but that'll hurt if, to, if you freeze it. I'm off, not worried about the pain. Then cut it off. Then pull it off. Then bite okay, it off. So you, then you don't know anything about this. Okay, so the reason I'm asking you is because I hear it's like in my mind, like people go like, "Don't touch them. Like, don't fuck with them." Right? Anybody? Yeah, yeah like, 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 it's been put in my head. I don't know if this is true or not, but it's in my head the idea Someone that if you if cancerous. you remove yeah if you remove them, it could cause cancer. <laughs> I mean, they're cancer mines. <laughs> I mean, well, that's got to be. I'm know, hoping you're not a doctor because I don't, I don't want that to be totally true. I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't. But that's don't sort of what I, I. I got the idea that what it is is that well, those things are cells gone mad, which is what cancer is. But these things are contained at least to like your East European heritage in terms of like, oh, I'll just put a bubble on this person's eyelid. Um, like, like just, so, just so they can get through this documentary about UFOs and, Think and, about and Russia. This. Think about and, this. Think about this. It's cancer that's trying to get out of your body. Right, exactly. And it's so when you, out. when you fuck with it, you're like actually hacking the mainframe of a thing that's already on the edge. It's like the Jack Nicholson of cells. And like you don't want to give it an excuse to do Witches of Eastwick. All right. <sighs> I riffed that. Like, in the moment, I was kind of proud of it, but it's not like... <laughs> it's not like, oh, Witches of Eastwick, that was his Ishtar. It's not like, I don't know. <sighs> mm, thanks, thanks. <laughs> Sometimes that's all we need. What? Uh, Just like one guy uh, at medium volume saying, saying good. "Good." I like that. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I like that. That's good. It's good. Like I, I and, and I, I'm I'm trying to. I'm actually now thinking in my head. Does it need to be a guy? Could it be a woman? Would it be different if it was a woman? Like like because I, I know I I mean I I listened to. Tori I think if Amos it was a, for, if it, it was a, a lady going, "Good boy." Yeah. <laughs> That would that would be okay. I could, that that that's a little bit of all right right there. I don't think it would work. I think I would project good boy. like uh, Robbie, you're such Freudian a good boy. like impulses on it. I would I, I would I would I would be like, no, you're lying. They all lie. <sighs> okay, good too good. soon. <laughs> too 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 common. Too common. Good damn. Not funny anymore to pretend to be misogynist. That you can go down the street and get real misogyny anywhere. Why is your fake misogyny funny? It's not. Is there another show? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's Chuck E. Cheese going like, hey. Hey, you like, you like my dongle? Look at yeah, my... what the fuck is that? <laughs> I got this thing on Amazon. It's like, it's backing up my, uh, my phone right now. It's 19.3% finished. To what? To it? Yeah, to it. Okay, so it's like a flash drive. And it's got, look, it looks like a Ninja Star. I don't know if that's racist to say now, but, uh, it, it, oh, it, yeah. it, 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 it just, it has like, it's a four... It's a four pronged thing, like a. It's like a cross kind of. Well, yeah, like and it's got it's got a different. Uh, it's got a micro USB, a lightning, a uh, USB C, and a regular USB, um, uh, respectively, as you go around the perimeter of the Karate Star, and uh, and it's <laughs> it's plugged into my phone right now, which means that right after I could pull this out and plug it into ostensibly uh, an internet a laptop, yeah, with even less storage than my phone. <sighs> Anyways, but once you start backing something up, I can I can't pull this out. No, it's terrifying. I I I, I, I don't know anything It'll about. Blow it. up the whole thing. How many how many storages do you? How many gigs are in each device that's attached? To that? Well, I'm 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 maybe coining this phrase, but I'm what you call a a, a snowball in uh, in the Apple douchebag community. In mm -hmm. that I bought the first iPhone and have bought every successive iPhone and have basically only ever transferred all of my information from my first iPhone to this iPhone. I'm seven iPhones in, and it, they keep expanding the storage, so I have never, like, ever dumped my phone's contents out anywhere for safekeeping. So you're dodging the question? Wait, sorry, what, what I, I... How many, how many storages do you have on it? How like, many, how many uh, gigs is it backing up? How many gigs can that device back? Up? I think this thing is smaller than my phone. That's what I was guessing, yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'm hoping that maybe that just the photos, just the photo roll. Oh, if you could do that, that's cool. We'll just go on here. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, we don't want to. I do. I got two hours, baby. <laughs> I mean, we don't have to talk about anything, really. I, I, I... We could meditate. Yeah, I'm pretty much done. I've been, I've been binging <laughs> the Golden Girls with, with Cody, um, which I know is like a, a kind of a hipster thing. Like, you're supposed to, you know, like, oh, Golden yeah. Girls. But, but, like, as a sitcom writer uh, of advancing age, uh, with a girlfriend who like would watch it with her parents, I think, when she was a kid or something. It was nostalgic value for her. But we both started watching it. It was like, you know, it's like hate watching it first, kind of like, yeah, he's old. Like, who gives a shit? Fucking Golden Girls. Like and, Golden Girls. Uh, Fucking and, and Golden Girls. Three or four episodes into the first season, you're kind of like, wait, there's something special happening here. It is, I want to be very clear because we're, you know, we, we live in a culture where it's too... It's too convenient for people to be like, this is genius and, you know, like, I don't know. I mean, look, it, television's a derivative medium. The multicam sitcom is the worst of the worst. It, 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 but it's as far as, like, what, you know, on some spectrum of, like, I don't know, fucking coolness. It, it, you know, you're dealing in drivel. But, like... At the same time, you have to recognize that there's a craft there. Like you, you know when you've watched a shitty multicam sitcom versus a a, a good one, and uh, and then and then there, but then there's not just that one dial. Like because I'm watching Golden Girls, and I'm like, I would never. I don't think I would stick with this for multiple episodes. But I'm so old now that I was starting to like dial into this thing of like, geez, this thing is kind of genius. Just in its, I think like. All I can, I can, it's, it's, it feels like a solar powered moped or something. Like it's, t it, I was just like, this show must be so fucking cheap. Like they never leave their house and they just keep talking about the same shit. Like one of them might get married and the other three are freaking out about it. And, uh, and like, but it's like, it just starts to like take on this like very, you're like, holy shit, in terms of like the amount of energy going in versus the amount of energy coming out, this thing is actually like a, like a, some miracle of sitcom technology, like yeah. a like a Dyson sphere, but like with it, it's just like what? How is this so? And it really does earn all of that, like kind of uh, you know hipster kind of like uh, well, it's veneer pretty, that it gets. It's pretty progressive. I mean, it's like all female cast plus they're all yeah older. They're not which, fuckable, which is pretty amazing. Are, is, are you guys really? They're like oh, <laughs> you know. I mean, like. When's the last... I wouldn't put it that harshly. What if one of them's listening? Was that what that was? <laughs> they knew going into it that that's what's. I for mean, the sale. only time, seriously, the only time something like that will ever happen again is if they reboot Golden Girls. Right. Like they they'll nobody's gonna go. Let's get a bunch of. We want the next Golden Girls or or whatever. I mean, was Designing Women on the same network or was I, it? I feel like Designing Women was NBC. I don't know if. I, well, I, what I, was it, what was Golden CBS? Girls then? Well, I have no idea. Okay. I don't I really don't Did know. Did you see the Tarantino episode of Golden Girls? No, I haven't seen that yet. Yeah. He didn't write or direct it, if that's what you're hoping but for. But there is a you get through the first season and you're like, you can tell there's something magical about you watch a first season of a show and you can kind of see like uh like, oh, uh, they're operating in total darkness. Like like they're on a sound stage somewhere and they they have no idea, you know? They they like 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 they don't know. They're going to be syndicated. They don't know. There's probably there's pro who knows how these shows. You know, they might have banked 25 episodes before they aired a single one. I have no idea what the history of that show is. But you know, it's like, just, like, just a re almost criminal simplicity to the first season. And we just went through uh, all 25 episodes, and it was kind of like it was very interested too in this idea of like obviously that note of schmuck bait what didn't exist back then because Golden Girls is like season one is like if you were ever going to get the note. Of schmuck bait uh, from a network. What do you mean exactly. schmuck bait? Schmuck bait is when is is just like uh, in broadcast sitcoms. It would be like a note you'd get that where like uh, you can't expect the audience to believe there's stakes here. So like like oh Barney Miller's gonna retire in like an episode 17 of Barney Miller where like what why would the show continue? Yeah, it's like schmuck bait. Like we know that's not gonna happen, so don't. So like oh this is like you, do you think the audience is is a schmuck like why would you be pretending that this is allowable as a oh, good. story Oh good. shit <laughs> Kettle one The breakfast of Thank champions Thank you Garson God this place is so fancy <laughs> 
I didn't know. One, I didn't know he was here. Kettle one, audience zero. Yeah, that was Jeff Davis. Uh, for those of you, Jeff who are Davis came for in free. with a bucket of ice. He presented the kettle one, and Dan sat down. You never got the schmuck bait <laughs> note. Of course you did. <laughs> you got it when we were writing I together. We've gotten the schmuck bait note. I whatever. Uh, it kind of goes hand in hand with the should I stay or should I go, which is like uh, that's that's like a category of schmuck bait. Where if you're writing a pilot, like like you can't you can't spend your pilot having the protagonist go. I don't know. Should I be here or not? Like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be here. It's like, hey, schmuck. Like, they're obviously, their face is on the poster and in all the commercials. Like, we know that Diane's going to keep working at Cheers. Stop it. But but they she stopped. They did it back then. They got away with it. And it's kind of, it's, kind of, it's fun to look at and go like, ah, damn, they didn't have that note to contend with. So they were able to tell, like, simpler stories where it was just like every fucking week one of the golden girls was worried that one of the other golden girls was going to move out and it was like come on that's the one thing we know can't happen but uh anyways but the the thing i wanted to talk about was uh yeah i was davis hoping this would happen out. <laughs> jeff davis just walked out He's, i hope he just keeps bringing things He's making the uh the uh, ice bucket yeah a lot more presentable thank what you could very come much. next thank you very much jeff just left if you're an aficionado, <laughs> if you're like an aspiring TV writer or something like that, I don't recommend this for everybody. I'm not a foodie of television. I'm not yeah. like, ooh, Golden Learn Girls, to wah, wah, wah. But I think if you're an aspiring like sitcom writer, if that, yeah. is, if that craft is going to stick around, but whatever. I think Learn it's very to interesting wash to watch. dishes. Season, <laughs> season two, episode one of The Golden Girls. Very interesting. Learn to paint. Learn uh, to paint. Obviously, they took a break. Obviously, then the reviews were probably like, holy shit, these guys are great together. There's something really amazing about this show. It's working really well. We love it. We love it. It probably wasn't like bet heavily on. The budget was low, probably. The, uh, and then it was like explosively popular. And then like one can only imagine, uh, uh, who knows? You could speculate forever. And then like, so then season two starts with episode one and it's like, they're in a in a new set that you've never seen before. All of a sudden, you're in the Golden Girls garage, which you've never seen before. Two of them are building mink cages. <laughs> this is a show that was like if you if you are a fan, if you've been into it, you know like how just like kind of provincial it was. It was like they just went back and forth from the living room to the kitchen and ate cheesecake and talked about the Jeff Davis stories. Came yeah. Out. <laughs> Bottle of water, bottle of Arrowhead. Tonight's show is sponsored by Arrowhead Water. Arrowhead Water, when you need a refreshing Arrowhead. Jeff Davis. Jeff Davis. So season two starts, and Jeff they're like, Davis. they're like, oh, God, we're never going to finish these mink cages on time and dirty go into the, who thought of going into the mink business? And it's like, like it's, not even a, it's not even an episode They're about... They're going one, into the mink they've business? They've gone into the mink business. <laughs> like, That's the crazy thing. It's what? not an episode like, about them deciding to go into it. They're going like to sell mink? I, they, it, it turns out to have pets? fucking nothing to do. It's like a runner in the episode so that in the end they can go, look, the minks are fucking. It, 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 was, so, it, was, it was about Rue McClanahan's menopause, the episode. It was so fucking like... Out of control, and I, if you're if you're if anybody that worked on the Golden Girls, like I'm confident that if you're proud of that episode, you're not the kind of person that I'm worried about offending. But like I I, I like 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 because I think that uh, anybody that worked on that show yeah. would they, they have to there has to be a story behind anybody, that episode. Anybody anybody that can write a show about a bunch of people hanging out in a living room and is able to get past page one is a fucking hero to me. They keep cranking the... Because cranking I'm like, the... what? I keep... I mean, you can do it. I'd be like, where do I go? Somebody's going to have to... I mean... Yeah, it sucks. It's a, it's a, it sucks even if... And you can cheat by like having your show be about a dude that burps and says, like, we got to go get all the diarrhea, and, the, and then someone goes like, oh, geez, I don't know if we should do that. And you're like halfway through a page. Uh, like... <laughs> That's cheating. I mean, the 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 I the Golden Girls writers. I can't were, do that. I don't think that's cheating. I can't do that. You could try. You did I, a, I did, have. You, you did a good job. You did your first beat sheet on Rick and Morty. That was your beat sheet, wasn't it? That I was a good beat help. sheet. I had some help. I mean, like, well, yeah, that's TV writing. You have some help. Whatever. Okay. We work as a team. 
All right, why don't you practice bringing out people for... Ladies the and game. gentlemen, put your hands and feet together for our next guest, Jefferson Davis. Swinging cat with us tonight. Put your hands together. Jefferson Davis. Oh, shit. Jefferson Davis. Oh, shit. Jefferson Davis. Casual. Oh, shit. Casual. Jefferson oh, shit. Davis. <laughs> Yes. Oh, shit. Mayor Jefferson Davis. Oh, shit. Rolling up the sleeves. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Jeff. Oh, shit. Thank you very much. Oh, shit. Jeff. Wicked, wicked. Oh, shit. Jeff just put his jacket around the Arrowhead water bottle and walked the fuck off the stage. Yeah. I mean, I, I got bad news, like... Dude, how do you... If everybody why, keeps why, phoning it in, there's not going to be much bother? of a show. Cause I'm I mean, not why, a... why, why keep going on, man? I mean, fuck it. With uh, life? With anything. I mean, like... So, yes. <laughs> Sick I of it. I agree. Oh, no, come on. You had I, a creative... You, you, it, look. I've been having a creative dot, dot, dot for the past 20 years, <laughs> dude. Don't even go there. Well, yeah, but you, you, why? Like everybody that that knows of you knows that you're, you came out smelling like a rose. You like people know that you're a genius and that you. I don't. You don't do, the, I don't want to hear. I don't want the. I don't need the pep I, I talk. Know, I, I know. I know you're not fishing talk. for it, but I'm just saying. I'm. I'm not trying to like pump you up. I'm just looking at it as, I, as did, a logician did, and going like, what? What? What do you? I mean, like, what do you uh, want a star on the Walk of Fame? No, like Donald I, Trump? I, no. No, I don't want anything, but I want I want a reason to get up in the morning. Because people are out there need they're, they're, there's like a like a like thousands and thousands of people that never even bother to send an emoji uh, because they're that most people don't like they they see something for thirty seconds that you make or a minute or five minutes or twenty minutes or a hundred episodes or twenty episodes or uh, like like overhearing in a fucking ca- uh, restaurant where you're being funny and uh, oh it, shit. I like it. That you put a lampshade on it. I bet you even thought Arrowhead it was. Arrowhead Davis. Yes. And it, we, and it, and it makes people happy. You, you, you take yeah. in carbon dioxide and you put out oxygen in a world that usually does the opposite, and then you sleep like a baby. You go, like, I don't have to care about all this other shit. I drink poison, I put out uh, purified air. Like, it's a good gig. You don't have to lift any boxes. No. I'm not high roading you. I'm just no, saying, like, you know, yeah, I. It, it just, it's, I'm tired. I'm tired of it. I want you to tell me specifically that uh, I, 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 need, I need you as your therapist. I need you to name your, uh, your goal, like your thing. I don't that know anymore. I don't know. Right. I don't well, know. I really don't know. Well, that's I'm a ticket to done. depression. I mean, that's. I don't know. I well, mean, I thought I did, and I, uh, you know, but it just seems. Then, then too I mean, late. I then I all I would say is then it's like sometimes we go through those phases where we don't know what we want, and those are those are the you know the grass is always greener, but there's a lot of people who know what they want, who when they look at people who don't know what they want are like must be nice. Like because they like, own, they know for sure that all they have to do before they can fucking relax is get these MRI results or like finish this internship or turn in this uh, theme paper or whatever the fuck poor people do. The um, and they they have that they're locked in that maze and all they can look forward to is like this for like for a lot of Americans it's the myth of retirement for but for, we're all doing it to ourselves every day. We're like, I just gotta get this. And then we're gonna find out who regarding Henry really is. You know, like what kind of Ritz crackers am I into? Like, like it's a good movie. You should check it out. Mm. The, 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 so, so you're you're in a place when you're feeling like this, where you get to now just fucking. I mean, the thing that you're depressed about is <laughs> it's bad. You should be depressed about being depressed Better about stuff. that. 
because that makes you a no, loser. No, no, no. But <laughs> I heard I, about it, and no, I was like, what a loser. No. Why is he depressed I, I, about I, that? I, I appreciate that, and I understand that, but it's, it's a symptom of a greater thing. If you're my therapist, you know that already. Yeah, yeah, come on. I, 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 I'm talking about the greater thing. To, yeah, and so am I. Yeah, like I think you're in a good. Uh, I think you should. Uh, well, I'm not saying you should be happy. I'm oh sorry. shit! What could happen? What could happen? A tie could go on the lampshade. Oh wait a minute! The so lampshade. That, the could lampshade tip. is the neck. What? What head could come next? I don't. I don't think he can do it. I don't think there's a head. That oh, but I shudder to wait. I don't think the head can fit on top of that. You hear that, Jeff? That's a challenge. Man, also, like, the lampshade could go upside down, but then the tie wouldn't fit. Why would you put the lampshade upside down? And it would, it would be over? easier. No, it would fit easier over the top of the bottle. Really? It's oh, yeah, I could demonstrate, but why would I do that? Well, it's looking... Like it's working right now. I know. I'm not. I'm not trying to. Everybody listening at home. I like the idea. Well, there, there's, there's, a, yeah. But let's not talk about anything other than Jeff's bit until Jeff comes out again. <laughs> That'll be good. Go. Because so that he's not taking focus from anything. He has to slowly eat himself. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's happening. Yeah. That's why I'm not eager to move on. I don't we should really... ask Jeff. <laughs> he's got shoes. Okay, he's now he's putting shoes out. And they're at the foot of the chair. What kind of golem are you making? You guys know about this golem? The Jewish golem? You put like a slip of paper in its mouth hey, and Levy. it does the thing it says, you Levy, say? Levy, you know yep. about the golem? Oh, Levy knows all about Le it. Levy. Hey, Levy, you're Jewish? Tell me about the golem. <laughs> Is that like your Santa Claus? Come on. Yeah, that's true. Golem, told him about Golem it. is made out of clay. Made it's out of clay. It's basically the first robot. Yeah. Right? It's a Jewish made robot. Made out of clay. It's a clay robot, and it's infused with Jew magic, and it hunts down... Alchemy. I think you have to say the whole word. Jew magic? <laughs> I think you gotta... I think you can't... I think the key is... Yeah, you gotta add the ish Jew if mag you're... Magi. Otherwise... Jew magi? <laughs> When you're what using it as a descriptor, you can't just stop at Jew. <laughs> like, you can't be like, I got in one of those Jew limousines. <laughs> like, Jewish, no, 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 though, it's, it's fine. Base, this is based on fact. A golem is made out of... Jew magic? You can't know. I mean, I'm just, I'm just telling you linguistically Your magic. what I've come to find, I think, is like the, you know, like it's a, it's okay, a nuanced you're saying game. I but... should be saying Jewish or Hebrew magic. I would, now, yeah, Hebrew magic this sounds is, great. This is a clay-made <laughs> robot... <laughs> Infused with Hebrew magic. Thank you. Brought to life via the Hebrew faith. <laughs> you did a really funny thing the other day when I left your house. <laughs> Side Oh, yeah, that was funny. I leave the house. No, I, I time it. Okay. Dan's like, you don't uh, want me to do it? Well, come on. I don't know. Like, I got, come on. Did you? Okay, I won't do it. I won't do it. I'm scared to do it. Okay, uh, sorry, I was scared. Yeah, Why? no, no, no. It's a, uh, sorry. It. Like we've entered a time when we can't. It's okay. It's, I won't uh, do it. I won't yeah, do it. Sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you after the show. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a bit for Shrav, and it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it a golem is a. All right, I'll tell you. Okay, okay, okay. You know. <laughs> It's forget okay, it, 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 but uh, let, look, you let me tell it so that I can protect myself a little bit in my it's own mind. It's just locker room humor. It was a, it was just a, there was give this us, give him a there give was him this a delightful break. little boy who was like scooting past Rob's car on this like crazy contraption that like has like this like like ninety wheels and like a big boomerang handlebar or something, and he was like a very he was a well dressed boy with like it was Saturday it, it might have been um, what do you call it Sh Shabbat. Or something. He had a yarmulke on, and uh, and he he was riding on this crazy contraption. And Schraub said, as the little boy rode by, he's like, "Wait, what do you call that thing?" And the kid was like, "A yinger flanger or whatever the thing is called, the brand name." And Schraub's like, "Maybe you should get one of those to me." And I'm like, "Why are you doing this to me?" And just leave. And and then and then I went back inside, and I just knew, I knew the timing of it because Rob would be like on the freeway by the time I texted, and I was just like, "I thought they were called yarmulkes." <laughs> just so it's, because which would have been. Sure, awesome. you were like, if you said to the kid, like, what are those things called? And he was like, a Yanger flanger. And it was like, he said that they, 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 as if the they were talking about his hat. 
I just thought the timing of it would be funny because <laughs> it would be like a big long pause. Okay, is this a good bit? Okay, I've I got a bit for you. Okay, it's, it, tell me, and maybe we can workshop this. Hopefully, it'll be better than the show fun thing from last week. But okay, so this is an announcer who does inappropriate pronunciations. Okay, <laughs> and it, all right. <laughs> Coming this Easter Sunday, ABC proudly presents the life and times of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Starring Willem Dafoe as Pontius Pilate, <laughs> Catherine Deneuve as Mary Magdalene, yeah. and John Rails back as Jesus Christ. <laughs> It's a nice, simple... There's something like, in there, right? I'd call that, like, 24-carat dad humor. Like, good dad humor. Like, dads are funny I'd sometimes. I'd call it really cool, sexy, I'm not bald humor. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it... I mean, like, this has happened in the last five years, and I guess it's because I'm older. Everything I'm doing is dad humor? That's right. Cody said... I'm, I'm embracing it. I mean, I truly... Honestly, I But really that just think... means I'm on, I'm on the way out. Dude, well, I don't have any kids. No, 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 that's not true at all. I think dad humor is coming. It's true. It's I mean, not, you're not getting younger. It's not our job Fuck after you. the age of 40. It's not our job. Oh. He put a drinking cup. Oh, boy. Oh, we'll make it work. As I was on, saying, you you're said, getting you older. We have, to, we have to ignore him. It's not it's it's not our job after the age of forty to be as to to compete with twenty five year olds in terms of like they're gonna yes. like like why yes. would, like like let them like understand what Tinder is, let alone what a funny uh, or a hack joke is about Tinder. Like we're not gonna compete with that, um, but that's not the same as being like out of business. Like you occur, as you lose your uh, your real time edge. <laughs> You gain all this other shit, like you, you're like you did it, folks. You, 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 and one, and one of the chief things you gain is fucking calm, confidence. Where you're, I, you, I, because, yeah, because, I, because, yeah. because, because charismatic twenty five year olds are ones that 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 create the impression that they give zero fucks. And when you're forty five, you can you 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 have an opportunity to actually give zero fucks, and uh, and and that can be helpful to a, a younger generation too. You know, so like I like the the dad joke. I mean, yeah, I'm like I'm like I I like say the most the dumbest things. I'm just like giddy. Like I just like smelling my own farts. Like Cody will say something and then I'll like make the dumbest like shrabby joke. Oof, <laughs> gotta hurt. Well, you know, I kind of I, it it doesn't hurt because I go out of my it's way gotta. to be dumb. And I think it's interesting because I don't think I don't think dad jokes come as a result of having a kid. I think dad jokes come as a result of being a certain age. I think you're like Gandalf the White comedically, which means that you're just like, I don't even have to be that intense about fighting a ball rock anymore. I can just be like, I'm here again. Oh. While you were having an adventure, I went and talked to the devil. <laughs> we made an agreement. I don't really give a fuck. I got my own franchise off to the side and no one ever watches. <laughs> Who knows what's under this robe? <laughs> Does my dick have a big white beard? <laughs> Did you know wizards aren't even uh, the same race as man in the Tolkienverse? It's weird. They're like angels. Did you know that, Schwab? No, I never got past The Hobbit. Yeah. It's true. Why? You know, when he fought Why Balrog, that was like a big deal. After after he fell down, shit was still happening down there. Is his name Balrog or is he a Balrog? I think he's the Balrog. I think there might be multiple Balrogs. Then he Someone can't said be two the... people said yes. To what? To statement? there being multiple Balrogs. Like he's a bad angel. So he's a race of Balrog. Of well, Balrog. I think I think they're like I I can't remember the name of them, but they're like spirits. They're like angels of the good god or whatever the fuck. And then the Balrogs are like angels of the the bad god who is not Sauron, right? He's like, oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Don't punish him. He's he's being helpful. Oh, yeah. Continue, what could sir. come after the the drinking cap? Um, excuse me. There is more than one ring. Each one of the. Don't let him bully you. 
whoever I I welcomed your information. I don't like yeah, I wanted the rings to like oh one like, you know, makes you float or something, you know? That would have been fucking cool. Uh, I'll never if, understand what the fuck was so powerful about that ring. I mean, I it get ruled it. them it's, all. It's powerful to be invisible, but don't, it makes you puke and turn into a Dracula. Like, it lets you control <laughs> ring raids. Yeah. It's not real standard invisibility. It's like fun for like ten minutes, and then you're like, Meh, I love fangs. It like takes you to the ethereal plane or something. Like yeah. that's what you could then see call ghosts. it that. Where the fuck? Where the fuck were all the other rings? I'm, t- I mean, I'm sorry, I'm stealing they your the guys valor here. No, it's... no, you're supporting me. Finally, I, 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 I'm like, what, is it, wait, one ring so ruled all of them, them all. Where the other fuck? Like, where, have yeah, rings? Yeah, yeah the all the ring rings, sir, which, which do rings. nothing God other than adorn rings. your hand. They make them into specters under control of the of the Sauron guy, but not invisible. Uh, maybe Super- they used to. No, I don't think they make you invisible. I think they, they were... Just, they just, they just, they're on your hand. Because, like, the elves made their own, right? And those are just fine. They're, like, fine. But then he copied the rings and was like, here, take all these, you kings. And Here's something you can do after 40 that you can't do before 40. Fall asleep. If you don't want to do something, you can text people, something came up. I've been using that lately. And people don't want to push Wait after you're 40. Like, I'll, 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 Wait a minute. Like I said to Levy, on, Wait a minute. remember when I didn't come to work on Friday? Something came up. I said, up. something came up. Yeah, I'll tell you what came up. Fucking laziness. I went to the drawing room and fucking hung out. Yeah. Steve thought that was happening. Yeah, I mean, I didn't make a big secret Listen, out of it. Listen, when you don't come to work, there's you don't have to say something came up. We just go, he didn't want to come to work today. It's your show. Well, it's I, your show. The boss didn't want to come to work today. It's Something fine. came up. Something came up. You can use that too, though. No, I... I look, I, this is all I got, man. You can, you can tell me something came up and not show up. It's... It, 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 but I... I, I n- I can't do that. I'm not going to fire you. No, I know, but that's that's not me. I'm not taking advantage of that. Because you work so hard. I try to. Yeah, wait, 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 like, wait, uh, let me Tyler Durden you a little bit here. Let me Dr. Phil you. Uh, I Jeff. I see Jeff. He's checking for his wallet. In the jacket. <laughs> he produced his phone. How is that working out for you? I saw Stuber. I saw the Kubel movie? Oh, yeah. What yeah. does Stuber stand for? Well, his name is Stu, and he he's in an, an Uber. Uber. Right. Whoa. And it's about a different guy. It, it's about Kumail. Isn't it about the, the shooting guy's guy? Dave B- D- Batista? I think he's called shooting guy's guy. Yeah. No, it's a buddy comedy. There's a dog in the poster, too. There's a dog in the poster, because... Which means I should go see it in the theater, because I can't watch it on Apple TV, and my <laughs> fucking dogs will go shit <laughs> It's a dog. fine movie. I, I thought it was okay. I mean, like I, I mean, I'm biased, because I love anything Kumail does, and I think him and Dave are great together. I would love to see them do another movie together. I... I, no offense to this Dave Batista guy who seems very charming and has a good he, relationship with him on he's screen, great. but I would love to see Kumail in like a North by Northwest, like every man, like leave out the buddy cop thing. Like I want to see Kumail. Oh, that, I think I do think like Cary Grant, like like like. Oh shit! There's a I microfilm, think, and then the guy's got a knife yeah. in his back, and Kumail's like, "What happened?" I think he's on the way to be a, a oh yeah big star. I think so. He's going to be in a Marvel movie next. Well, he's know? very talented, and he's he has his really moments. Likeable. I think he's great. Love the guy. We miss him. I, I'm happy for I him. I text him quite often. The show's, I text him the too. The show's taken a dip. <laughs> he was a fun influence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, wait, what is that? Oh, I, I, there's, a, there's some movie. I was, I was like, oh shit, we could watch that now. What the fuck? Wait, what did I? I think I, did I text Cody? Then I can remember. You what do you look, do when looking you, at your own you, text messages to remember what you were anybody, thinking? Do, do people go through this a lot? I mean, my whole life, I've always known what I wanted to do. And then in the last, mm. like, three years, I've gone, I don't know anymore. I, I think don't that know. happens, yeah. And it's and it's and it sucks because you just, you don't have a... You don't have an X on your treasure map anymore. And, and most people would say, I mean, would say that's a... 
actually a good thing because life can be exciting again. Because that's everyone's ex, yeah. Yeah, I know, they, they, I know, well, so I know, I know, right. I know. But I've been always, unfortunately, and this is a problem in my life, I've go, always gone, well, I'll do this, and then after that, I'll do be able to do what I really want to do. And I've been following that carrot for 20 years. So is and Spielberg. I'm, and I've found, found out that there's no carrot and well, now I'm like, well, now what? And I've wasted my time searching. You for didn't this waste character. your time, but it like, wasn't wasted. But I, but but I'm, I'm 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 lost. I don't know wh- how to even. Bob Dylan is that a guy? I think sure. Bob Dylan like he like puts metal together, like he's like a good singing guy, and he's like, you know what? This is stupid. I want to put metal together. Like I think that's a, I think a thing that a lot of creative people. I don't know. I think part of it is just like humans are designed to be happy like in the middle of something but then when they like feel like they get what they're achieving or they kind of get some taste of it they're like actually this sucked and i think it's But like, i haven't even gotten that far. You've gotten even... pieces of it. Bird but then box. You just... Bird box. I, I was like, "Oh shit, that's got to be rental." Birds now. delivered to your house. I want to see this Free bir- I want to see this Bird Box movie where you can't look at shit or you go crazy. Oh, I don't know, I show me what's chasing me. I'm going to go crazy. I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, Bird Box. I hear there's this alligator movie, Crawl, came out. You know the thing about that alligator movie, Crawl, that came out? What? There was an episode of American Dad where a house floods, and then a shark is attacking everyone in the house. And that's the movie Crawl. <laughs> it's an it's episode al- of American it's, Dad. It's also the movie Bait from sure. Australia. But it's by the person that did that. Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe is horns, uh, right? He sure is. Same director. <laughs> See that horns movie? No. Daniel Radcliffe like wakes up and he's like, "I got horns," and it's like mystical realism. And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> oh, wake me when you're Star Wars, bro. That's me with every movie. I'm like, "Whoa, where's the lightsabers?" No, you're not. I don't like I don't like mystical realism unless it's uh, so mystical it's that fantasy. it like tracks. I don't like it when people are just like, "Eh, hey, there's a uh, fish on my toe," and then someone else is like, "Boomerang!" And I'm like, "Okay, what's that?" <laughs> Those movies are challenging the worst. me. Yeah, those are crazy movies. Yeah. Should we should we get Jeff? Out? No, no, I screwed up. I screwed up. I don't. Yeah. When's the last time you saw the movie Orca? Uh, never. A little, Try uh, never. A little attempt to cash it in the Jaws. I've seen a lot of Jaws ripoffs. There were but killer I seen whales that. always in the ocean since the beginning of time, really. And uh, uh, so Jaws came out to, uh, uh, I think, positive reception, and uh, people were in a flurry. They were like, I will. I would also like to make a movie about a thing under the sea that eats people. And uh, they were like, oh my god, there's these things called killer whales. We should make a movie about them. Orca. And orca. Orca. It was called Orca, like probably 1978, Wasn't Wasn't uh, Quint Ship called the Orca? Yes. There's yep. a connection. Well, because orcas, I think if they see a shark, they'll fucking annihilate it. Yeah, man. I don't know if orcas ever do see sharks, though. Where do orcas live? Don't they live in, like, fucking... Pennsylvania. (sighs) That bagel boss guy. He's a charlatan. He was pretty angry. Pretty pissed off. That's what he thought would make the video go viral. You're just playing into his hands. Yeah, but that's okay, right? Isn't it? Like... Uh, Well, I'll tell you, when I saw it scrolling through my feed being shared by multiple people, I was like, I don't like the smell of this. I ain't watching. And someone's like, Bagel Boss is a fake. He's a phony. And I'm like, I knew it. I smelled the right smell. He's a fake? You mean he Wait, so that was it was staged? Yeah. That's what I was trying to express. Even the people behind the counter? No, no. they No, that's what sucks about it. He's he's just like, I'm going to act crazy and get online. Oh, do you think he had a friend tackle him? I'm fair. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, it depends on where you just... So if you define fake as just like he goes... He purposely was being belligerent knowing that something would happen, then he's consistently been doing that. But that's not fake. That's going into a public place and being a dickhead, which he... Yeah, to be online. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. which, 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 Which is why I was worried only for five seconds he was going to kill himself, and then I found out he's a person who... This is the shit that he rolls around in, and I was like, 
Like, I, like one one other person's not going to commit suicide because of like fucking internet infamy. Because he wanted it. He wanted it. He and wanted if the audience it. wants it and he Want- wants it, then it's kind of like almost. But they want it because it's real. They, how real do they really want it to be, though, when they're like, if, do they really, would they want to be responsible for him blowing his brains out? I want to be responsible for, I'd take pride in that. I'd hang that on my wall. Oh, come on. You'd Internet hang, asshole blows his brains you'd out. You'd hang the You're bagel boss of I'm video. I'm not being glib. I want a lot of people to you, die. <laughs> you would hang the bagel boss video on the wall and be proud of it. No. First of all, yes. <laughs> First of all, yes. No, it would be like a, an award for most bagel bosses killed. You know, we never finished the... You never got a chance to explain what the fuck happened with the bees. As as uneventful as it was, like I, like we introduced the segment, Spencer explains what happened with the bees, and... Oh, I didn't notice that. Did that happen? Did I not? I thought yeah. I told the whole story. I don't know. Yeah, well, like, what, 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 I, I, I want the mundane story because I've never witnessed bees being like excavated from a wall before. What happened? All right. So the guy who did the estimate, he was like, we're going to have to open the wall, close the wall. We, we're working construction. It'll be bing, bang, boom. The guy comes out. He's like, oh, this is a retaining wall. Who gave you this estimate? And I was like, uh, I don't know. He was like young, some young, he was like some young guy, like Anthony. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. Sure. And he was like, yeah. This is a retaining wall. You don't want to damage a retaining wall, you know, mess with the structural integrity. We can repair it, but it's never going to be the same kind of wall. And I'm like, well, there's still bees. <laughs> and, the, and the bees are now being used as an excuse by the fifth in a series of children's crusades to, like, make my stereo work. Yeah. We thought it was, yeah. And now I've moved out of the house and I'm probably investing in Apple home pods and I'm never gonna look back. But at least all those <laughs> children died. People are just gonna yeah. So what, what did they all right, so what did they do? They just so, walked away from the retaining wall? He was job? like uh, he was like, Okay, so he, he looked at it and thought about it a bit and he was like, Okay, so I'll, I'll well what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dig down. Because the retaining wall is up against a hill and so there's a bunch of dirt, so you can stand in front of the wall and, and shovel down with a shovel. And I was like, okay, that sounds great. And he was like, do you got a shovel? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> I could get a shovel. So he's standing up up where the coyotes go. No, he, no. He, he's up there, no. No, so you have this, the, it's the patio wall right. against which is like uh, the, the, the barbecue and stuff, you yeah. know, that lower wall. Um, oh, that wall. Yeah, that's the one the bees are all up on. It's a little short wall. Yeah. The, the, oh, okay. So he's like standing over it, you know, chest high and kind of just hacking at it with a garden trowel that I found. Um, so he's using the garden trowel. He digs. It must have been like five feet. I don't know. Like he did it very fast, but I was like, I feel like you're going to need a bigger shovel or something. He's, uh, he did not need a bigger shovel. He didn't need buckets. He just kind of tossed the dirt backwards, not backwards behind him, like uh, up up the hill. And uh, he eventually got, he, he got down there enough. And then... Uh, he turns on the bee vacuum. <laughs> There's a bee vacuum. Oh. <laughs> and um, he's just vacuuming bees for like an hour, I want to say, like an hour and a half. <laughs> and the bee vacuum looks very much like a shop vac that's just, <laughs> it, that's right. just, it probably is. It probably is. Yeah. Well, if it isn't, I would be like, get a shop vac. Yeah. <laughs> But it's attached to one of these bee boxes, like it's a big, you know, maybe quadruple shoebox size wooden box. And I'm like, well, how do you, you know, how do you take the lid off that thing? And there's just bees all over the place. But uh, so I, you know, I'm not asking questions you just take, too loud. You just take that box and sell it to like almond farmers who are like not paying top price, but like, here's your bee colony you wanted to pollinate your fucking orchard. And it's like, little do they know, they're like these embattled, confused, traumatized bees yeah. with no queen who are just like angry at the world. I asked him what he did with the bees, and he said he puts it in a cardboard box and sends it to an enemy. So um, you made a new friend. Yeah. Yeah, we were great. I was like, you know this bagel boss guy? <laughs> Um, how did how did he say that last part? Did he like give you like a little wink at the end, or go? <laughs> or well, whatever? he nudged me or in the ribs just... with his knee, with his elbow. Did he really? No, none of this. <laughs> I, there wasn't even a bee guy. I just hit it with a pose. Oh, Jesus. Uh, no, okay. So he doesn't he doesn't send the bee box to his enemies. Okay. Um, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. He didn't say that. That was an embellishment. No. 
Okay. I thought that might be a funny thing to say at a well, comedy it might, show. Well, it might also might be true that it's a funny thing that he would say because he's in that business. That would have been funnier if he actually said it. Yeah, right. But he he's didn't. earnest. No, he's just a he's just a consummate professional. This guy. Okay. He had a cool looking apiarist outfit. You know, um, in Minecraft you can make one, but it takes a fucking Ape, it's a what? nightmare. An what? apiarist is a bee man. Yeah. What? What? Say it slower and, and louder. Apiarist. A p i a r i s t. Apiarist. B is nowhere in that. No. Word. Apiary <laughs> is what? a bee thing. A, a, an apiary is like a bee house or something. But it's ape. Oh, God. Don't don't. I'm trying. I know, but I'm just can't you just let it go. So I can it's be just as language. smart as you. Uh, you what, know, you're, then if I'm smart, I'll be happy. What's the name of a? So like a bug scientist is like an entomologist, yeah, right? No, but that's the word not bugs insane. say that. No, it's it's not though. But it's like entomology has nothing to do with bug or insect or anything. It's just a word that's is, that means the thing. Yeah, it's just language. It's and silly it's all sometimes. due to etymology, which has nothing to do with insects. Yeah. All right, come on. So he vacuums stop. up the bees. Just like, will you stop for a second? Trying Your to quest under- for fucking truth about every word. I just there's just words. Understand. Yeah, yeah. I hope you do. Um, but there's bees. He vacuumed them up, put them in his bee box. He takes off the top of this bee vacuum. There's a little screen down there. The bees can't come out. Okay. I don't know how that happens because the bee vacuum was on top of that screen. Huh. So maybe the screen f- slides in through some... But then like, the bee could get out from there. I don't know. I didn't question it. Um, he had the bees in a box. There was something like three, 400 bees. Um, there was still about 16, 20 bees, maybe 40 bees kind of flying around, buzzing around the outside. He got all the honeycomb up out of there, and I think he put it in a trash bag. Oh. Um, I know. It, was, it would have g- been delicious. Give, give you a little taste? He didn't even hand it off to a bear. Did he mention the queen? Uh, he did not. I did not ask the about the queen. still in there. No, presumably the queen was taken with it. Because he got... The queen would have been, uh, you know, yeah. san- san- put, what do you call it? Put, sacrosanct? Sacrosanct. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been uh, stationed up in the honeycomb, which he removed. And I don't know. Um, yeah. If you kill the queen... I think you don't kill the queen if you can avoid it. Um, but yeah, I think he just... Maybe he just vacuumed it up. Like, God, it's like very thick in the hose. Like, God. Yeah, it's, you expected me at the end. He goes, Oh, that was the queen. That like, was it was queen. like a. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It just spluts onto the. I bottom guess of the professional box. apiarists, like people that cultivate bees, what they'll do is they. I, you could just smoke the bees, which I. For, Makes them more mad. Question number one why does, why does spraying smoke all over bees calm them down? <laughs> What a dumb design flaw. I think it confuses flaw. them, right? I think they can't see, and they just kind of like, That oh, should be shit, a pretty for fundamental thing for all life is like, oh, there's smoke. I should get like upset about well, it. Well, well, bees are like, Dan, let me tell you this. If you're driving and there's a fog, do you drive faster? You drive more calmly. No, I drive slower. Okay. But I, 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 think, I, I think it's much more morbid. Okay, all right. Look. Oh, beehive. Um, <laughs> it's not working very well for bees. They're, it's it is an exploitable defect in their oh, yeah. fucking consciousness that they react to smoke that way. I think it's more like when you park in your garage and you leave your window open and the engine running and then you fall asleep and then you die. I think it's more like that. Oh, you think they're getting high off the smoke? Well, not high so much as suffocating. Right, they're not they're not taking in as much oxygen. Right, and I think they yeah they don't they and because. I think some of them so get a little killing sleep. Them? I don't think so. I don't think it's enough to kill them. Poisoning them, but, roofing them. Yeah, I don't know that they hack and cough and scream running out of the building. You know, but some of them do. I think some of them get a lot more pissed off when when the smoke is happening. I don't know. And the whole thing is, he's in a fucking outfit anyway. What does it matter if the bees are pissed or not pissed? They're not going to do anything. He's like impenetrable. Yeah, and people that may, the people that deal with bees all the time, that make honey or whatever the fuck they're doing, they they they're in the busy. You know, you can just get queens through the mail, and then like you, queens have a certain lifespan, five seven years or something. It's like it, your bee colony needs to be a little less sluggish than that. They'll get high on the hog at the end of Queen Victoria's like reign, and like you you the the they they'll just pull out the queen, put a new queen in there, and the bees will be like, okay, cool. 
Yeah. I the guess hierarchies. we're making honey for her now. Exactly. Uh, uh, like, 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 what an exploitable bunch of nimrods. You know, they used I to mean, think I mean, they're bees... flying insects that have stingers on their bodies. They have no they idea how dance. close they are to being, like, so... Like, they could... They could have taken over like that. Oh yeah, and then, and I mean, we're, I'm terrified of them. And and then and it's extra terrifying when you learn that they're like super intelligent. And they have their own alphabet, and they like make these hexagonal fucking things. Like Jesus Christ, this that's scary shit. They they could have like like they just need to be a little more uh, evil, and mm-hmm. they could uh, they they would really have us over a barrel. And like killer bees. They're making like chapstick for us. They're hanging out. <laughs> And Birds they're on piece. the endangered list along with every other fucking thing. Yeah. Big dummies. <laughs> Way to go, you big dumb shit bees. Uh, yeah, you're on the list along with you dopey gorillas, you dumb fuck giraffes, stupid ants, you fucking foxes, stupid ass clover eating deer, uh, fucking marmots, whatever that is. Mammosets, I'm making shit up now. It's all stupid. You know what you should have done? Five fingers and a big ass brain. What? Yeah. Like what? Up the what? What? <laughs> what? What fingers? Five fingers up? The, Shove what? a brain what? up their ass? What? No. Well, I don't. Why? Why? What you add up the butt to what? Me just saying. You said what? Five... <laughs> what? Is that painful? If I told you how the sixth sense end, would you be like, "What? He see? He's dead up the ass." I like, didn't... why would you just add up no, the ass? No, no, no. If you said five fingers, up and well, yeah, why? And why did you take it there? I'm not kink shaming you, but what the fuck, dude? I'm like making a really salient point. Uh, I'm just trying to fill time. Look, none of us want to be here. I love it. Anyway, the bees. Yeah, he, so he well, I'm sucks glad out I, I'm the glad bees. I got to hear the end of that story. He oh, sprays the bees, or he sprays the thing with a like anti bee pheromone or something. He says the bees hate this; they hate this. And then uh, he he covers it back up, and then he takes the bee box down to his car. But there's bees outside of the bee box, kind of hovering around. They're like, "Where's all the bees going?" You know. He puts it into his car, and there's a couple bees that are like trying to get into his car. And I'm like, "Oh man, do bees ever get out in your car?" And he's like, "Yeah, one or two. And I'm like, man, that's nuts. He's like, ah, that's fine. <laughs> it's like, that's an occupational hazard yeah. is loose bees in the car, and he's just come to terms with it. He must have been stung a million times, and he's just like, yeah, whatever. I asked him about that. He said, like, not, not too many times. He said, like, I can remember the last time I stung. Uh, I got stung. Well, then why is he so chill what, about what, a bee when, in his car? When was it? A bee, one bee in your car is what? our definition of an emergency. Yeah, why he, why, why, what right does he have to did be he, like... Did he say when was the last time he got, like, who was president? Like, when he got stung? Yeah. Who? who? Obama. Obama, <laughs> he got stung when Obama was president. Yeah, first or second term? I don't know. I didn't ask which term. I mean, are there is there any end to that guy's fuck ups as a president? I know. Thanks, Obama. Um, but on top of everything else, he got that guy stung. And then he said he takes him to his house. He has like a property that has where you think he just he's just he he's like a, a hoarder of bees. He just he puts the bees in like a bee apartment and I he just lives there. I feel sorry for the le- bees that got left behind. They love it. They're having new friends. Oh yeah, no, that's terrible. Actually, I to feel think sorry. About. All these bees that end up in my swimming pool, I keep like scooping them out and like uh, it, it, probably the same bees. They're just like they're. they're Why all, do they go in the water? They're thirsty. I someone told yeah, me. Yeah, they are thirsty. And I'm like, that's silly. I, I, like like with their bees, they could get water anywhere. There's dew drops. I, don't they live in a, like a, a, a? That's proof that bees can't tell stories. Yeah, I always like, they, they, they wiggle around in the pool, and then I'll, I'll like let them out. I'll put them on a pair. Of, I'll take a pair of swim trunks or something. I'll go like scoop, and I'll put them on the uh, edge of the pool. I'll go like, there you go, you did it. Uh, you know, you're uh, supposedly like seventy percent of the food web or something. I hope you do well. And then the uh, bee is like, it can't be flying. And he's like, he like, gets the, he works it all out. And he's like, God damn, can't believe I fell into a giant vat of chlorinated fucking like water. And he like, walks right back and like, plops in the pool. <laughs> These fucking things. I'm like, I, I did one, I did three rounds with one of them and then I fucking smushed it. I, I, I was like, oh, damn. I, I, you can't. I told him, I said, this is God talking to you. You have done this twice. Like, I cannot allow you to keep walking into my pool. 
You are self-destructive, and I am no stranger to that. Maybe the chlorine made him. Uh, he loves like, it. Maybe messed, I, I kept messed up thinking, his brain. Like, maybe he's a maybe he's or a being with the right well, priorities. It's his. He's like, dude, it's his, right? I'm in I Hollywood. I'm in a pool. Like, what are you trying to do, man? This is where I wanted to go out. You're not in Hollywood. Damn. You know, they used to call them king bees because they couldn't fathom queen or, you know, a woman being in charge of all those bees. Really? Yeah, I think it was Aristotle who's like famously sexist. Remember the the Roland Emmerich Godzilla movie where they were like, where Godzilla like gave birth to a bunch of baby Godzillas and then, and they said, oh, this male must give birth to. And it's like, just, you can't. Just say Godzilla's a girl, you. God damn it! Well, why? Yeah. Why couldn't Godzilla be? A wolf? Well, because then YouTube would have fucking. <laughs> oh, dude, my feet. I'm sorry. I refuse to review this movie. Um, they didn't mind they made Godzilla making Godzilla a into a prancing ballerina, but they had. They they said, "Well, we, this one's not a girl." Yeah. I don't. It's, I they it went. Up. I, it was like a story point where they kept like saying, "Well, it's strange because you, usually the the male does doesn't give birth. It's usually the the other sex." Whoa! I mean, like that's God important is exposition. His name. Uh, did you uh, uh, do you remember when we met with uh, d- d- uh, those guys? Yes, when they wanted to do Godzilla too. Yeah, I'm older than both of them now. We met with those guys. Yeah, we got that was that was another career non changer because yeah. we pissed them off. Like I, I don't think they pissed them off, but I think I think nobody wanted to nah, see their version of be, a sequel. No, well they could, but they we could have come out of that meeting with those guys going like this Harmon and Schraub guys like they're cool like but we we insulted them on accident. How how did you remember how? Uh, because we we said. We were we were. The movie was a piece we were, of we were, shit. We were we were talking about the giant robot movie that we were writing at the time, and we were like, uh, like we were like, uh, yeah, no, it's gonna, be, it's not 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 like your movie. It's gonna be like just like old school, like guys in suits, and then they're they're they're, they're and uh, Roland Emmerich was like, uh, I remember him as smoking with his like like holding a cigarette like this, but I don't know if he was actually he doing it. He it's just he's so German that I was like yeah. just remember him like this, like. Mm. What if you took put a dog's head on a Jew's body? Um, the the he didn't say that. He didn't say that. He did, no. He did not say that. He, he said Jewish. That. He said Jewish. Uh, he was very tasteful about it. The the, the no, but I just picture. I mean, are you sure he wasn't smoking? Because it was like smoking. we were in Dwarf. Well, it was his. I mean, he owned fucking he was Columbia smoking. or something. Like, he you know, it was like like it. it uh, anyways, but uh, yeah, he and because uh, the, remember they kind of blanched when we said uh, we mentioned guys in suits. I do remember. And then suit. they said they said like God's, Dean Devlin said uh, Godzilla was a guy in a suit, like their their Godzilla, and and you said. Yeah, motion control suit. <laughs> and we kind of like, we were just sort of like, <laughs> like, why are we bullying them? But we didn't mean to, but I just think, I don't think we hit well, it off. Well, they came out of the gate saying, well, what we wanted to do is take something really dumb and make yeah. it cool. And I was like, get the that fuck That was Emmerich out of said here. it. He's like, like, you watch those old Godzilla movies and they're so cheesy. We just wanted to make it less cheesy. And you, you, nah, you wanted to murder him. Yeah, I would fucking kick him in the. But Nards. you don't regret that, right? No, not at all. Great. So, like, like, so that's a good example of like, like, so like you're going through some woes right now. Like, what's the real voice, the voice inside your head? Don't you think that's thematically connected? Where it's like, you know, you're like, when am I going to get a break? Like, wait, or like, why? You know, it's like you don't want to be on the wrong side of your own personal history. I mean, you're, you're, you're a creative guy that has answers to a higher calling like the reason for your current woes are precisely because you give too much of a fuck not too much like pejoratively speaking like you you give too much of a fuck for them and like it's problematic for them that you give so much of a fuck that you're like don't you why do you want your thing to be shitty and they're like fuck you like kind of thing whatever like it happens to me a million. I mean, like, like whatever like like I I I at the end of your life you're gonna you're gonna be like, God, thank God! Like like like, what's the alternative to that? Like, it's called selling out. Like, I don't I don't want to be like Tyler Durden about it, where it's like, ooh, it, it, I think there's a there's, there's just as much joy to doing what people want you to do, but you know, you're cool. Everybody likes you. Like, fucking sh- fuck off. Eat it. Fuck off. 
right. You guys know about countertransference? Yes. Okay, moving on. Now, Our what, next what guest, is it? What is countertransference? It's when a therapist is uh, is like projecting their own situation onto the client's situation and oh, giving them advice. I, bet my, I think my therapist is doing that a lot. Really. Oh, no. This Yours? could be bad. Uh, no, unless he thinks that I'd look a lot like him with a haircut and like he's thinking of a time where he had super long hair and then he... He got his hair cut, and then like someone gave him a therapist degree or something. He just but started. it could be in that example that your therapist is like transferring like some kind of like weird insecurity about their anything, like, right? Whether it's physical or not. But they're, and then they're like, "Why don't you just fucking get a haircut?" You know that they're yeah. like, Shh. Do, uh, uh, "How is that going?" By the way, I haven't been. Uh, he's had a thing. I've had a thing. We've had some things. Um, no, but when when he brought up the haircut for like the billionth time or whatever, I was like. <laughs> I was like, uh, do, you, <laughs> do you think that like, if I went to another therapist, they would say stuff like this? Or do you think that's just you? And he was like, well, there's this thing called countertransference. And I'm like, okay. Um, what the fuck? Are you out of your fucking mind? Our next guest... This is gold over here. You know, it's one thing when it's me. I'm listening. This is Stop the closest making... thing I'll ever have to a son. You're going to have kids, right? Well, nah, pro- look at me. I'm not going to have kids. I can't even g- g- uh, get up out of this chair. I, I don't want to cast a value judgment. I just thought that was an intention that was happening. No, nah, I like Cody makes the world go round. If uh, she wants kids, there's going to be kids, but like she's not sure. Right. Let's not get dog, distracted want, by that. I want, I want my dog to live forever, or at least longer. You can than clone me. your dog. Clone like, your dog. It's not the same thing. It will be. I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to clone my dog. Clone your dog before there's, there's, it dies, there's, there's, and then they could be friends. No, there's too many dogs out there that need homes, and I'd rather rather give another home. But I do both. I, I just would rather that I die before Kate and Lolly. You could. I could arrange that. Let's talk. I used to tweet stuff like that, and then Courtney Love would text somebody. <laughs> like, like you're, you're sounding like you don't alarm. Uh, let the kids know that I'm you, fine. I'm you're fine. I'm fine. I'll get over it, but I don't know. I'm sick of everything. Hell well, that's yeah. Good. I, I, I like you that way. That's punk Miserable. rock. <laughs> like, like, like ha- ha- happy people are boring. It's a flavor. It's like uh, black licorice. It's yummy. It, 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 life is darkness. It's uh, it, 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 but it's fun. It's like uh, you get your health, and and God is a weirdo. It's and easy for you. people listen to you. People I don't listen yeah, but, to you. Yeah, yeah no and it's not making me any happier. No, no, no. Yeah, so you got to do a podcast, Rob. Do your own podcast. Yeah, I don't have anything to say. About the Shrobcast. All, all I've done is rack up a bunch more stories like you have, where I'm like, and it's my own doing because people listen to me. What you mean is like, oh, I don't get fired, I, I fuck up and I quit or whatever. It's like that's the only difference. Like, it, <laughs> I, it, it, it's like I, I just all, all I do is like, I, the more permission I get to like uh, tell people what to do, the more I let them down. You should be like excited about like your dilemma. I, why am I telling you how to feel? I, I, like, like you're living the dream, you little piece of shit. I think that a lot of people, myself included, uh, think about their their life in terms of ah, uh, I'm too old for it to happen. Like everyone thinks that. Yeah, but what to happen to play cards against humanity? Like, wh- what's what is our dream? Like, I th- yeah, I, I'll tell you, swimming pool turns out to be pretty fun. But all right, so this transference thing. The 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 therapist like uh, uh the, I like this like you 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 pulled a real fucking oh, no. uh, what have I done No that was a fucking like that was a very dare I say like me move on a therapist like well, that, where, where you were like hey you think if I see another therapist they would talk this much shit like 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 asking them questions about their profession and then the guy was like 
forced to open the hood and go like, oh, well, there's this thing called transference. I bet you fucked him up real good. Well, yeah. I mean, that's the thing is because like there was, I was not making eye contact with him because I don't because... Because uh, he asked you to once. He so asked me to. Him. And also he just doesn't look great. I don't want to look at that. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to hear his soul cry. Yeah. But uh, I just mostly don't like that. Also, I just don't want, I want, I don't want to think about looking about, like I want to think about what I'm thinking about. Anyway, yeah. but I was I have no problem out. looking at you while you're saying this because you're not looking at me. And right. I like looking at you because you're great to look at, especially because you're not looking at Tell me. Tell that to any to woman. Dr. Fuckface. Um, yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Fuckface. Um, no, it's true. But so I, and then I asked him that. I was like, is that, and then I was making d- the most direct eye contact. I was like, I am going to eat you right now. And uh, I'm sure he loved that. That's what he was wanting the whole time. I had, I had a threshold with my therapist once where I was, I told her, I don't know how it came up in context, but I was explaining to her, uh, I told, there's a story that I've told up here at least once, if not twice or more. The, we can about skip it then. The, th- the I had a therapist who uh, I stopped seeing because she was crying while I was talking to her about my childhood, but it wasn't really talking about like cry worthy stuff about my childhood. It was more like, here's my favorite book or something. And then she was like crying. And I was like, why are you crying? And she was like, it's very emotional stuff. And I was like, no, it's not. And then at the end of the session, she was like, uh, I feel really conflicted about this. I'm really humiliated, but y- you called me out on the two years before I had some eye work done recently and my eyes are watering. And then my instinct when you asked me why my eyes were watering was to lie. And I, and I was like, I thought in my head, like that's, fine to make that mistake and then to come clean about it it's and if you were my mechanic it would be fine to lie about it and blame me or like like, 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 but you're my therapist i think it's kind of a dick i just never went back and i'm sure she wasn't shocked and I, I, I hope she never thought, oh, I shouldn't have been honest. I hope she got the, the other message. Which was, I shouldn't have been dishonest. Right. Uh, but anyways, but, but the, the, I was telling that story to my current therapist. And my current therapist kind of was like, she basically was sort of like, why are you telling me this story? And I was like, I don't know, because we were talking about this one thing. And she was like, are you maybe letting me know that you're like a power user <laughs> like right. of therapy and like I shouldn't fuck around <laughs> because and she said she sort of had a way of expressing she was kind of like like she didn't she didn't counter it wasn't like a she but she I I get the message from her that it was like because that would be a fucked up environment in which I would have to work kind, kind of and like right. she she humanized herself it was sort of like 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 she said what I would say, maybe, if I was a therapist and someone was like, well, one therapist, one time, they fucked up, and I, I, I cut them loose. And, and then I, I guess I would, I would say to that patient, I would go like, well, if what you're saying to me is that this is a fucking minefield, like, I'm probably not going to get any quality work done while I'm, like, sweating and, like, worried that I'm going to cut the blue wire instead of the red wire. And she kind of, and, and it was a, it was a big threshold for us, like among many, where I was like, oh man, she, like I trusted her more after that, and I, and I think the moral of that story is, is both that yeah, bad therapists suck and should be cut loose, and good therapists, you know them when you got them, because I was able to tell that story to her, and instead of her being like, what a shitty therapist, holler at your girl, she was like, like. It's notable that you're telling me that story, and like, like it, it was a it was a pathway for us to deepen our relationship, and for her to be able to help me even more because I was able to open even more gateways to her because she earned it by reacting like a human being to that story, and and uh, and, and communicating her own vulnerabilities and stuff. And I and and so not that you asked for advice or anything, and you you already know this, but like yeah, like you definitely have uh, like the green light to cut this piece of. He's not a piece of shit. He might be a wonderful therapist. He's but yeah. He's like not compatible with you. The thing, yeah, the, we were talking about that, and he was like, "Well, you seem to have a lot of, you know, uh, what do you call it? Like weight put on your looks, or you you feel like your appearance is messed up." And it's like, well, I feel like that because when I'm at the store, I'm like looking at cereal, 
and then like a kid runs by, and then like a mom clutches the kid close and glares at me as they walk off together. <laughs> like I was gonna like just reach out and start like molesting that child or something, <laughs> not even making eye contact. And when like that you're happens, the Van Halen of molestation. Yeah. <laughs> And when that happens to you enough times, you're like, wow, people must really think I'm like a living monster. Nobody thinks you're a living Certainly monster. Certainly the parents who do that no, to me do. No, they, uh, they're, then that's their problem. There's yeah, no, no, I agree that's their problem. It's it just traumatizing. it be your problem. You don't look like a monster. I do to these no, people. Oh, come on. Uh, one time I was leaving Dan's house in the middle of the night and just as, as things. What? Yeah, not in the middle of the night, sorry. It was like at a party or something. It was a while back. But I was like leaving your house and I was getting onto the sidewalk and someone was jogging by like right at the same time. And um, it wasn't like I stepped out in front of them. I We kind of just kind of stepped out in roughly the same space and she like screamed. And I was like, I am I guess I'm just an ogre. <laughs> like that's, I'm like Frankenstein. Well, I think, I think. She probably you startled her. You know? I did I, I, with my I, appearance. I, 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 but no, I mean, no. having set, set, weren't you terrified that she ran by? I mean, like I, I was terrified that that's the effect I have on people. And then I was like, yeah, no, this all tracks. I've walked out of that gate, with, and it's like it's the 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 physical. There's no line of situation sight. Situation of it is God like so it. every once in a while, my like ass. boom, somebody like runs by or walks by with their dog. I fucking freak. I'm yelp. Yeah, that's what I, she I would, did. I, well, but yeah, but what if those people that's thought it was because said. they were ugly or monstrous? They would be so wrong. I was like, there was a physical body like coming My by me. Ass and I was is like, oh, ass. oh ass. from the stool. Yeah. Asses fell asleep. I, I to... Oh, Jesus Christ. This couch isn't bad. Um, <sighs> is Jeff still here? I think he left. I think it doesn't, he left I mean, his shoes, jacket, That's a good tie, point. He can't really get too far with all that stuff. Clip. He has his phone, though. Uh... Why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't we, why don't we make a new friend? We haven't done that in a, in a long time. Uh, 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 who's somebody that? Um, uh, how do we? What do we do? We can't just base it on who wants to be on stage. Those are horrible people. Uh, <laughs> but inevitably, that's what you're picking. You know, it's right? Like, it's not like if I say who's allergic to clovers and someone who doesn't want to be on stage and is richly allergic to clovers, they're gonna not raise their hand, right? They're gonna they're critical thinkers. And now they have to be people who are willing to raise their hand after being potentially called out as people who want to be on stage. So that's already going to be like more fucked up people. Well, I think I, well, maybe I'm deluded about this, but I think that me doing that kind of actually eases the, like, like me calling attention to it like means that if they raise their hand, then it's like, now well, they've thought about it. And the audience is like, who's this piece of shit if I can watch you be on stage? It's like, I already talked about it. Like they're aware of the fury. Are you doing any new music? Are you doing any music? New music? I hit, I hit like this thing. I'm trying to mic my car. I got, I got, I got, I got fucked up like neurological problems, man. Like well, I, yeah. I, 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 I get into something that makes me happy, and then I fucking like, I just like, I'm like, oh, I gotta. Okay, I get it. I gotta mic my car right, like, like so that I can do little raps that were making everyone happy and making me happy, and I'm like, like. Somewhere in there, I just like I just I ordered like a million dollars worth of fucking shit that didn't work, and then I was like, I don't know what it is with me. I got my own. I got I got fucked up shit in my brain. Yeah, it's you sucked. know, like yeah, that's gotta suck. You know, like at Starburns. And then I started I started playing Cookie Collector. That's when you know I'm really fucked up. Like I, oh, like, yeah. like there's a couple of uh, fans that are like on my Cookie Collector team. Which is called Jerry Burry. And uh, they, they like, you, they're like, Plugging oh shit, Harmon's back. And I'm like, I know what that means. They know collector. that I'm like in some kind of depressive state because it's like I'm all of a sudden I'm collecting like 30 billion cookies. Guy's got two houses. What do you got to be depressed? Yeah, I know. About? It's, 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 just, it's just biorhythms. I think it's just like a sine wave. It just, I'm not even depressed. It's just sort of like all of a sudden your expression of happiness becomes something else. Like all of a sudden I'm just collecting cookies. I don't know. Why am I not making a thing? Like I, I was like learning software, and like, I, what am I doing? And all of a sudden, I'm collecting cookies. I don't get it. You know? Yeah, I don't get it. Uh, 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 well, we can't, we can't, we can't call anybody up that uh, that 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 um, we all we talked about was Bagel Boss guy. <laughs> that almost sounds like Battle Bots. Pool robot <gasps> <gasps> supplying. <a cookie gasps> 
Polish mole. There's nobody here that's like 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 that knows about uh, skin tags and Polish moles kind of thing. Is there not like, the any? cancer mind? Yeah, yeah, got a little finger a hand, hand. I'm sure. Or is it, can you shout out you your expertise? Are you covered in them, or are you a dermatologist? Or I, I work uh, as a researcher in a dermatology Holy shit! Would you like to come up here and if we if we force you to, and you have the excuse that we force you to, and everyone knows you're a good person, and you're not you you're not just yeah. I know. Oh, see, the, now everyone will love you. Yeah. Come on up. Have a seat. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Hello. Jeff? Jack. 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 Close how do you be- Close How enough. do you become a researcher? Oh, Jack? by the way. Jack? Jack. Jack. I, just Jack. Re- I just remembered something. And you're wearing who, a jacket. Who are, who, are the guys that, who are the guys that walk past me on the... Uh, oh, Jesus fucking Christ. You're going to knock over the Jeff Golem. Damn it. This fucking show. I just every week I want to quit, and then I give it one more chance, and then shrub. Who are the guys I walked past on the sidewalk when I was coming in? With you guys here? The, okay, yeah. Do, you do, you didn't take that. The, 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 I I I felt like I I accidentally offended you guys. Okay, because I I did a thing. It was like kind of like uh, when I fr- well, the first time I met Seth Rogen, uh, it was like we were walking on a. On a on the on a lot of some kind, and there was someone I was with that like knew Seth Rogen, and he was like, "Hey, Seth, it's me, so and so, or whatever." And 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 Seth Rogen had the he was like had this like Seth Rogen chuckle, but I was like, "Well, yeah, I knew I knew when I saw you guys walking toward me, I was like, well, these guys are probably fans of mine." Uh, so something like like it was like, and it was kind of an endearing thing, and it was kind of like in the moment, I was sort of like because I saw you guys coming. And then you were like smirking at me because you were walking past me. And then I had a moment to think about it. And then you guys were like, "We're coming to see your show." And I blurted something like, "Yeah, well, you look like it," or something. It was, <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm, I really didn't. I, 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 I'm not good at talking. <laughs> Welcome, Jack. Uh, okay. How so, do you become uh, a researcher? Do you uh, have to do science? Yeah, I got in it after college. I was. Um, I studied organic chemistry in college. Right, and I was okay. working as an organic chemist in a research lab, and then I got hired in a, yeah. That's cool. Dermatology laboratory. So, like, uh, all right. So, what do you know about <laughs> this? You, maybe yes. you should touch it. That's an M4 <laughs> well, class. I, I, maybe neither of us want that. No, so, no, no. Just, like. Give it a little twiddle, just, yeah, just uh, so you uh, can... Let him, I, I'll touch it if you just, want me to. No, I you don't have to touch it. I, I no, want you I'm to not touch concerned it. about it or worried about it. I think you should it. touch it, right? <laughs> you should be. <laughs> Rob, if it, it's if not it's, important. <laughs> if it's entertaining to the people. <laughs> no, it doesn't, it's not important. It's a... It's a wait, 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 okay. They have a normal life cycle. Um, they grow and they fall off, generally. What are they on a cellular level? The, uh, they're just epithelial Gross. tissue. But, uh, like, uh, like in terms of like, uh, is it is it is it related to cancer? Like, is it a phenomenon like cancer, but it's just like not? Yeah, so they're called like a nevus, which is like a form for a skin lesion, and which is just another word for a mole or something All like right. that. They're not technically a. M- how come some cells can go crazy and start just making more of themselves and you get like the, a blemish like a mole or a skin tag or uh, and, and like how come how come how come sometimes that's just like a thing that's contained and just like falls off or isn't isn't worrisome and then what what why is that why isn't it a zero sum game if a cell has lost its mind and is just making more of itself like why do, why do some of them just stop and make a mole and some of them become a tumor that kills you so it turns out that like mutations are required to make cancer and mutations happen all the time they happen every time your skin cells get hit with sunlight they happen every time you interact with uh toxic chemicals Mm -hmm. and um a lot of those mutations are harmless uh and in fact it takes sometimes hundreds of mutations or or thousands of mutations to make something into a cancer and what you almost sound like you're saying that the things that, that are, are, are benign that grow on the surface of our skin, that those aren't the result of mutations? Uh, they can definitely be the result of mutations. Uh, there's a genetic component to uh, things that grow on your skin, uh, nevi, as they're called, or moles or skin tags. Uh, and the genetic component, so some people, especially white people, 
have uh, up to hundreds of moles on their body, and some people don't have very many at all. I'm also one of those people. This is the, mo- the most harmless form of white supremacy I've ever heard. I never, I never knew I could get behind any form of white supremacy until a guy went, whoop, to, to the skin tags being prevalent. Uh, 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 yeah, oh, wow. I mean, gosh, Jay, I, like, like, thank you, but you're like a dream. Like, like wait, wait, I want to plug your album or something. I mean, you're, like, you're, you're, you're being so like, like fucking straightforward. So hey, anti-Shrob, hey, I call it. You're hey, being so you, anti-Shrob. Do you see Chernobyl? Ugh. I haven't seen Chernobyl. Oh, is it? It'd probably act- be a nightmare for you because yeah, you're like, yeah. oh, I know exactly what's happening to that guy's face. Yeah, yeah, you should watch Chernobyl. It's really, it's really. People are really liking it. Oh, they're, they're I'll watch thinking it's great. Chernobyl. You should watch Chernobyl. Do, do you have uh, Chernobyl? <laughs> do you have Chernobyl at home? You don't I, have to. Do you pay have any it at home? at home? I grew up with Chernobyl. Chernobyl. Yeah. Right, right, <laughs> right. It, Happened to yeah. all of us. Did it? Did, what kind of a lifespan did it have, and did it fall off? <laughs> Long. Okay, so important question. Don't here. ignore me. So, th- so when one of these things is growing on our eyelids or our arms, dangling off, and like, so what about this like uh, science that I've had programmed into me? It's like I'm not supposed to do anything to this. I've heard people tell anecdotes about. I went to my general doctor. He brought out a scalpel and sliced it right off after I worried about it for six months. He's like, who gives a shit? And then other people go, don't touch it. Don't fuck with it. Like if you pull it off, it'll, it's like it becomes cancer. Is there any truth or the reasoning? The vast majority will not become cancer. Is there any reason why people would think that? There's, I mean, with every, so one part of, a possible life cycle of anevis is to accumulate enough mutations to become cancer. And whether you and and, may, and so maybe pulling it off is simply encouraging it to grow more, like pruning a tree. In which case, if it was gonna eventually become cancer, you're just giving it a kind of a boost. So the it's... the worry with cancer isn't so much that it's gonna grow; it's that it's gonna metastasize. It's gonna spread to your other tissues, and it's gonna cause them to shut down, especially your major organs. Wait, what's the uh, say that again? Because that's the definition of a really important cancer. So, so metastasize means it, say that again. Yeah. So the 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 worry with cancer is that it's going to become metastatic. It's going to be able to move through things like your bloodstream or your lymph into other tissues. Not that. Well, so so cancer can't just kill you by just like like I'm a little piece of bone that decided it's not a bone. I'm going to grow into a big ball of bone. The problem is that it actually spreads to like lymph nodes and whatever. I want to kind of add the disclaimer that I'm, I answer this question to the best of my ability, but I'm also not a doctor. I'm just, just a someone researcher, who right. in a research. You also said, you also said, excuse me, Dan, you also said you weren't a good person. Explain yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm on stage, so in some, in some way, uh, yeah, I wanted to be here, and I don't know that. I guess that doesn't make me a good person or a bad yeah, person. I mean, wow. I mean, me yeah, yeah, then we're all it's bad a, people. It's a constant paradox. You're, you, it's a Taoist uh, <laughs> principle. Like, like, if you thought you were a good person, you'd be a shitty person. Person, you got to think you're a bad person. That's your only recourse to being a good person. Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I went. So yeah, are are there are some of the people who are watching through subscription who are seeing your face are probably wondering like dermatology research. Are you like cheating? Like, do you like are there astringents at the office and things? Because you have very nice skin, and <laughs> I'm not hitting on you, but like you're. I uh, thank you. I actually. It's one thing I'm self-conscious about is my skin, which is weird, maybe, to hear you say that. What are you worried about? I don't know. I, I mean... Uh, uh, you're very handsome. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Everyone under 40, by the way, is just wonderful looking to me now. I just <laughs> look and I see everyone as like non-piles of bones. <laughs> and I go, hubba, hubba. To, to answer your original question... Uh, <laughs> What's, what's your favorite kind of cancer? Let him answer. 
Let him, I want to know. <laughs> let him answer. Sunburns. Uh, let him answer. Everybody. Sunburns. You couldn't come into the laboratory with a sunburn. That would be, you would, yeah. My Wait. boss would tear my head off if I came in with a sunburn. Oh, like, well, okay, so well, tell me a little bit about that, because I'm a very, like, uh, very, very caucasoid, like, guy that just got a pool, and, like, I'm, I'm... I got a lot of British DNA and I'm like, I turn pink fast. I peel fast. Like, I like what, I don't understand sunscreen. I don't understand. I don't even know what to ask you. I wish you could just tell me something to make me not worry. Cause I feel like I, people are always telling me put on sunscreen. I and definitely I'm like, tell you something to make you not worry. Okay. What's that? I don't know. That'd be true. You should oh. definitely worry. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, let's uh, hear it. Okay. Let's I, hear like, it. I like that honesty. <laughs> yeah, tell him. You're saying I could lie to you. Yeah. But, you, all right, well, don't. I don't want you to. I, I think the coolest thing about sun tanning, actually, is that, um, is my favorite fact about skin, really, is that sunlight, yeah, well, I guess I'm a nerd. Uh, sunlight, uh, in order to tan, you actually have to damage the DNA. Tanning is a direct response to, like, getting DNA damage. Sunlight actually comes in and it mutates or it or destroys parts of your DNA, and then your cells respond by, wow. by producing pigment. And they produce these little shields, like in your skin, melanoma or not melanin. melanin actually produces a little shield. Like if you look at a skin cell under a microscope, it'll be there'll be like a little shield of melanin over the nucleus right. where the DNA is held. So it's melanin cool. is what it's, a, it's a, like. I think you just told me, but it's a, it's, a, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a coating around a cell membrane? Yeah, it's a pigment, so it's like a small molecule as opposed to like a um, uh, protein or something. Is it itself, it's not, it's, it's I'm trying to picture like, like, like remember when in high school they showed us like a cross-section of skin and it's like, okay, there's like all these layers. So like, is melanin like a chemical that exists somewhere in one of those layers that like... Oh man, this is a lot, gonna be a lot of science. Um, <laughs> so... Melanin is produced in the melanocyte. It's a special type of cell specifically for producing melanin. A totally uh, special cell. Yeah, it's in the basal layer of the skin. So the skin has like a lot of other types of cells in it. One of them is the melanocyte. They have these like special little tendrils that, pers- that are like... Pumping out melanin. Pump, pumping out melanin, and they actually like ship it off to all your other cells and give it to the cells so that the cells can protect themselves. And the cells coat themselves in it? No, they just produce like a protective shield over the nucleus. Oh, just the nucleus? Just the nucleus, yeah. Now, oh, wow. Yeah, which is pretty cool. That's my favorite. <laughs> that thing is about, cool. Yeah, I, thought, I thought so. God damn. <laughs> I love fucking biology. Uh, I, 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 yeah, and so, and so, and so, and so our, our emphasis on, like, pigmentation with the, as we, uh, you know, uh, eight billion of us are all, like, mad at each other, we're looking at each other on Facebook, and we're, like, recognizing each other as being from different parts of the world and things, like, all of it really comes down to, like, these shades and things, and so the, the melanin is, like, a, so there's, like, if your if your genetic heritage comes from a part where there's, it's being beaten by the sun, then, than those melanites. Melanocytes. <laughs> melanocytes. Alanis. <laughs> More so. <sad. Melanocy. laughs> I'm going to make you olive complexion. Um, it, it, they're, they're, it's just, they're, just, they're, they're just pumping out different degrees of sunscreen, like, which probably comes at a metabolic cost, right? It's That's like, correct. Yeah. Actually, both those things, yeah. And so, and so white, white people are at much higher risk of skin cancer uh, than people that have like more melanin like black I guess it's just natural suns that it, it's per, like because your nucleus is exposed to the sun yes although anyone can get skin cancer right 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 not to say yeah i'm not telling anyone to what go, about brad? go say again what about brad Br- what <laughs> just a friend of yours that yeah <laughs> can he get skin cancer how, uh, does he ever go in the sun? Well, yeah, he's Brad. Oh, 
I kind of wonder. Yeah, so, Brad, it makes me, like, Brad. So it's like these mutant. Like, like, so like the, this, the thing that's hanging off of my arm, yeah. which may or may not fall off. It'll pick its own time. But it's, it's, so it's an expression of my genetic code as a person that's descended from East Europeans and British people. And it's like, it's a part of my skin that's going like, oh, this is a good place for like a random fucking quato, like to just like blossom off. And it's like, it, it, even though it's not mutation based, it is long term mutation based in the sense that parents are shuffling their genes every time they make a baby. And then we're all carrying over these like weird random experiments in our DNA. And some of those experiments will say like, this person should have this color eyes or this person should have like this dorsal fin or gills or something and it like might come in handy but like my DNA is includes all this like static that's like and by the way have a little like porcupine come off of his arm when he's 46 and like it, it it's it, it has in its own way it, it's a function it's it's an it, it would only have a function if it was in, in the sense of emergence if over time it, wouldn't it You're ultimately like it could lead to if there was a chance that, that having that thing on my arm led to my DNA <laughs> like if, if if everyone found that incredibly hot and and not having a thing dangling off your arm was like gross get them away from me and then and then wouldn't would this pass to my children like growing it on the same spot on my arm no okay yeah, you're asking basically: Is there a selection pressure, an evolutionary selection pressure on things like skin tags? That's exactly what he's asking. <laughs> I'm also asking, like, to the extent that it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a function of my DNA. Is it, is it, is it? Yeah, is it it's, hereditary? It's, but it's hereditary to have them. But is it hereditary, hereditary the location them, not, of them? Location-wise, uh, you're there's probably predisposed places on people's bodies where they're more likely to occur. Just Like if the... your mom and dad both have one on their eyelid when they're 25 and both of them grow and fall off but and then they have a kid together, is that kid more <laughs> likely to have a skin tag on their eyelid the, <laughs> or just more likely to have skin tags? I, I'm definitely not qualified okay. to answer that question, uh, but doubtful. <laughs> All right. Well, Jesus Christ, what a fucking podcast. Well, I... if you're so smart, you tell us about the Jewish golem. Yeah. What do you, what know, do you about, know about the Jewish you know golem? About that? What's it powered by? <laughs> what kind of magic? Yeah, what, which, which magic? Oh, I can probably confirm that it's not skin tag magic right. and or skin related magic. Thank you. Do you, Thank you. Do you live here in LA or are you visiting? I'm visiting. Oh, who are you visiting? Or, well, tell me, <laughs> tell, tell me when I'm prying. Who are am you, I visiting? Yeah, or why My are you sister. Here? Your sister? Yeah. That's wholesome. Thank you. Stop hitting on him. <laughs> uh, is she... <laughs> of marriageable age? Does she have a brother? <laughs> no, God, no. <laughs> I was going to say, is she, is, she, is she an older sister, a kid sister? And then I was like, I don't even know how old you are. And then I was like, hey, can you ask anyone's age anymore? I, just, I always want to know how old everyone is. Cause... 28. Oh, fuck you. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> so is she your kid sister? Or your no, sister? she's older than I am. She's 30. And uh, is she here? No, okay. she's not. She, uh, what, 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 what a nice family. You're, what, what, you, you, you visit your sister? Yes. What's it, what's it like to... <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, what's it, yeah, what, I, I, it like? like where, where are you from originally? I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. Okay, not that much of a trek. I heard a youp. We got a youp. Uh, and are you 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 sound like you sidled into this dermatological research part of your organic chemistry? Like, are you? Do you have? Do you have dreams that overflow that cup? You like you you ended up there. Are you happy there, or is there a is no? There I, a ladder? I left there actually. I feel like I'm kind of in Schraub's position where I'm kind of like, oh, wow, what the fuck? See? I don't know what the See? fuck. You've hit See? a crossroads. You're like, what yeah, am I doing? Exactly. You're exactly. fucking lucky, man. So you're basically Appreciate a 28-year-old dude with flawless skin. Are you happy now? You're in the same Thank fucking boat. You. <laughs> so stop fucking doing what we used to call bitching before the Me Too movement. I didn't bitch. Uh, I didn't, I did, I'm not bitching. Okay, well, don't repeat it. I've... <laughs> Have you been Me too uh, Not, n no. It's, <laughs> it's like a chemical peel. It's amazing. 
it just leaves you like it's like it hurts at first, but then it's like, oh my god. <laughs> it, it sounds uncomfortable. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, you, you should see the other guy. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's do. Okay. You know how we uh, let, 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 let's. Uh, so so. We're going to do a little uh, game here, Jack, and it's called, um, uh, it's called, it's called Life Crossroads. It's an improv game that uh, Rob Schraub and I do where we, we take you back to a, a point in your life where you, you're wondering, like, in, like, you're thinking, like, what if I had chosen this instead of that? Can you conjure that moment in your head? Like, like, and what we will do is revisit that it moment. Sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> so, like, the things would be dermatology or anything else. Sure, or like, like anything. You could also go back to eight years old and be like, "What if I had taken piano?" I, I like whatever you think is like a a really like crucial branch in your life where you're like, I really wish I could know at least and check in on, on who I would have been if I had done this instead of that. I know it's a lot of pressure and I can, I give you a couple of minutes to order. I think I I'm... don't know what I would have done differently. I, at one point I wanted to be an engineer. I don't think that's significantly different from like a research scientist, but well, uh, one, I, one, one, I don't think one I rides a choo choo train. Yeah, I <laughs> so different. I wouldn't want if I was on a train. I wouldn't want the guy p making it go choo choo to know a lot about skin. Okay, all right. That's a good point. See, dad humor. It's fun. <laughs> I well, well, come on. All right. Well, no, yeah, no, I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not that, lashing out I at you. Cross, <laughs> I think that crossroads is like right now in my life. Right. Okay. Like, I think well, I, I think well, okay. it, I think let's I can look then. back in ten years and right, be like, well, what if I hadn't you, done okay, this? Well, tell what if I hadn't then, left? So so tell tell us like a, a a kind of dilemma you have if you don't mind, uh, of like 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 what's like a radical decision that you think is on the table that you you're because you're a logical guy and you're like oh I would never maybe do that but like like I would never do stand up but like at this point in my life I I be I. I would like think about putting myself in that position. So, and being on stage here is like one of those things where I'm kind of like, well, do something I'm uncomfortable with. So we should show you the then position. what your life would be like if you. Okay, All right, you hear that, Shrab? Okay, so here we go. So enjoy. <laughs> what if Jack had done stand up? Instead of dermatological research. Okay, welcome to the Comedy Hut. Tonight on the Comedy Hut. Okay, come on, people. Keep it going. This ain't easy. Ellen DeGeneres. Chris Rock. My name is Ellen DeGeneres. And Jack. What? <laughs> I... Apparently somebody's on stage. I do <laughs> Uh, During the intro, uh, let's give it up for uh, Ellen DeGeneres, uh, who just said uh, Ellen DeGeneres. Here we go. Yeah, it's okay. Put your hands together. Who's there? Here's Ellen DeGeneres. My name is Ellen DeGeneres. Hi, Ellen. Uh, <laughs> I'm not used to this format of <laughs> show. You, you're doing great. But I have a few jokes prepared that I would like to do. Um, <laughs> it would seem that a man walked into a bar <laughs> in an auspicious time. <sighs> Shit. I can't do it. Boo! Get off the stage! Oh, no. the oh, oh, oh. 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 Meanwhile, all right, all right. Oh, so, go ahead oh, with the narration. Oh, oh what are you? Are you a guy? Are you a character in the? I, I went. I I was the MC, but of, you, I don't have to. of the stand-up show, of the comedy hut that I introduced. Okay. No, it's during the show. Okay, all okay. right. What? Wait, uh, 
Go ahead. Meanwhile, backstage, you said. <laughs> Jeez, I heard. Uh, <laughs> I heard Ellen died out there. It's not encouraging. Yeah. I. I my name is. I have is, a feeling uh, she's a better stand-up comic. Yeah. Than whoever would follow Ellen on her own show. Yeah, she's very experienced. I mean, for her to eat it out there is like very scary. It's my, her own I, audience. I, my name is uh, 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 David Spade. Uh, I also am a veteran comic, and I'm very scared based on what I just heard out there. Uh, your name's uh, Jack. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, all right, okay, all right. Uh, uh, all right, we only have time for one comedy space, so we're going to have to have two comics go up at the same time. Uh, uh, so will Jack and David Spade please uh, report to the front of the stage. May I repeat, the front of the stage, not the back or either look, left or I, right. I, are you cool with this? Reporting to the front of the stage? Yeah. It doesn't sound like we have a choice. The yeah, right, let's front just of the do stage. it. Okay. Here we go. All right, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time, only at the Comedy Hut, it's David Spade and Jack. Wow, bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it up. Uh, bring up the levels of laughter and clapping. Uh, <laughs> look, uh, the two of us uh, don't like airline food. Hey, fuck you, David Spade. <laughs> fuck you, David Spade. Shut up. <laughs> Your last name's a shovel. It doesn't matter. I can't. I can't do this. <laughs> I'm definitely a lot worse than a famous comic at this. Dude, <laughs> uh, I prepared zero material. You have to. You have nothing. <laughs> Fuck. Shovel name. What? Shut up. Shovel name. Look. Uh, Shovel name. I got. Uh, Shovel name. Look, we're just gonna look. Shovel sweet. name. We're gonna have to do improv. <laughs> yeah, in the show. Okay. It's the only way to bring it back. Okay. I, I'd like a suggestion. My name's Lauren Michaels, and my oh. suggestion is tennis. Oh fuck! The stakes just got so high. Wait, what was his suggestion? Tennis. tennis. T tennis? Tenors? Tenors? Tennis what? Tennis. Tennis? Tennis is a suggestion. High stakes tennis. Okay. Uh, oh. Right. Ding ding. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for meeting me out here on this tennis court. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking jacket! Jacket rules! <laughs> Jack, fucking rules. Oh, I got. Well, must be nice. God damn it! All right, well, let's get started playing tennis. All right, coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the coach. <laughs> fucking shovel me. Coach, how about one of your classic life lessons during a match of tennis? <laughs> guy's pimping me it's called pimping it's a thing all right yeah yes and i'll give you that if you when you if when i give you the life lesson you say thank you in a jamaican accent i mean how do you like it how do you like it that's what you did that's basically what you did <laughs> not cool not cool I don't think I'm in the mood for a life lesson today. Oh. Uh, anyways. Okay, all right, well. So maybe maybe just serve it up, and we'll get a workout in. Okay. Or something. <laughs> all right, all right, well. Yeah. Good, good shot, coach. <laughs> oh, 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 did I? Okay. I, mi I missed yeah, that. Did last I one. win? I won. Yeah. <laughs> Swift, well, whiffed on that one. That's why you're the coach. That's. Well, you know, I won, so I guess I jump over the net. <laughs> ah! Ah! 
The skin on my leg is damaged. <laughs> Good thing that before I decided to learn tennis, I learned about how to undamage skin. You know about skin? Only but you're damaged such a good, skin. But you're such a good tennis player in the scene we're improvising <laughs> as stand-ups. You know about... Don't, well, help me. It hurt. My real-life skin hurts. Because while I was playing a tennis player in this improv scene at this stand-up club, I also actually, as a comedic performer, David Spade, hurt my real David Spade skin. Help me, Jack. <laughs> it looks hurt. <laughs> If I were a doctor, I might be able to help, but oh. I could probably just tell you why it's hurt, which is that it's trauma to the leg. You're right. And that gives me the confidence to finish my set. <laughs> Y'all notice that women be shopping? Yeah. Whoa! David Spade went on to become a famous comedian, entertaining millions of people and launching his own franchise, Spade in America, on SNL. Uh, Jack uh, learned that his true calling, no matter what field he went into, would always be to know more about skin than uh, people who did it. And so um, it, 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 turned out, it turned out good. It turned out that you, 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 your life is good. I'm pretty sure I started this by saying that the last thing I wanted was to l learn more about skin. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I... So definitely good is not how I feel about the rest of my life at this stage. You're right. But I All guess right, well, there's a hopeful future <laughs> in there somewhere. It could, yeah, I mean, there might be comfort taken in the idea that you're trapped. You're trapped in your life. Right, yeah. Like, there's a lot of people listening that are like, yeah, I wish I could choose to not work at Home Depot. <laughs> what are you doing? What is that? Okay, we've done more than enough uh, doing show. Doing some atmosphere. All right, I'm going to do a uh, skin... Hey, uh, hey, hey! Doesn't what? my voice sound different? <laughs> Did you hear my voice? Dan. Yeah. Dan. I don't know how to end shows, so we'll, we'll do a, a dermatology rap. Here we go. Come on. All right. Yo. Yeah. Yeah. Yee. Yeah. Yo. Yo. Skin deep. Yo. No. Mid epidermis. Yo. Yeah. Oh. Epidermis. Yo. Flipidermis. Bilipid bilayer. Oh. Yo. Oh. Hydrophobic. Hyper. Hydro. Hydro. Hydrophilic. Yo. Bilipid bilayer. Like, you know, bi bilipid. But you know what that means. Melanin, yo, melositis, making melanin like arthritis, yo, generated in your skin, oh, that's where racism begins, yo, you see somebody, you're like, oh, he's dark, that's not a walk in the park, you gotta observe that there's just melanin, and oh my god, d d d d d let me in, let me into your heart, my name's MC Fart, I'm just past gas, but I'm also gonna pass the test, I pronounced test wrong. just for this song. My name is Mr. Jones, whoa! Are you different? Yeah. Okay. What's your name again? I can't remember. Uh, the MC uh, something, uh, okay. Well, uh, let's both get out of here. Okay. My name's MC Fresh Start. I'm from the heart. They were talking about farts. Oh my God, I'm on a cart. You can order me from the start. Uh, I'd like to, uh, 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 I'm getting out of here too. <coughs> check, check one. My name is MC N New. How do you do? I I'm here to rap uh, to close the show. <sighs> okay, I'm, I'm also leaving. Uh, my name is Optimus Prime. I'm here to bring the rhymes. I turned from a truck into a man. Now I'm doing all I can, opening my chest, revealing the matrix. What, what's gonna rhyme with matrix? It doesn't, uh, 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 Autobots transform and roll out. Okay, fight the guy. I'm fighting Megatron on a on Hoover Dam. Uh, uh, what was your favorite show when you were a kid? I heard A-Team. <sighs> Mr. T, Mr. T, Mr. T. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what? Uh, I had that, okay. 
do you, how do you end the show with that? It, 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 it's a uh, uh, banger. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank Jack for coming up here and uh, sharing himself. Don't ask him for medical advice. Oh, nice of you to show up. Look at this guy. The one, your one job, ending the show. Jack, don't, 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 don't ask him about your moles when you. Do, do, do you want to plug anything? Do you have a SoundCloud or anything? Okay. All right. Thank you. Like, like, yeah. Buy him a drink, but. Rob Schraub, Spencer Crittenden, uh, thank you guys for coming out on a Monday, and we'll see you next week.